So we're doing the evaluation of Buffalo Wild Wings, and I know that they don't have any debt, but I'd still want to leave you with an example of what you might do if a, if a company did have debt. Um, you would build up a debt schedule that lets you, you know, be flexible with the amount of debt they take out. If they're negative cash, they need to take debt. Um, in our Buffalo Wild Wings, to keep it simple, we didn't assume that. We just assumed that we would tell the model if they would take on any debt. But that was because they had such a good cash position and have a strategy of no debt. In reality, most companies do have debt, and they need to increase or decrease their debt based on their cash needs. So if their cash available is negative, you need to take some debt to pay for that cash. There are also planned debt raises. Um, if a company planned to take some debt, you would build up a debt schedule, and that feeds into these parts of the model, if you remember correctly. It feeds into the debt balance long-term debt and short-term debt, feeds into the cash available for the pay down, uh, cash available uh, for pay down or fi for financing, um, and it also feeds into the interest expense, um, which is in the income statement. So you've got balance sheet, balance sheet, income statement. These feed into that, and it's important. So the first thing I did is I linked this cash avail available for pay down into this uh, spreadsheet so that we know how much we have available. And we're going to deal with three different types of debt. Uh, we're going to deal with a bank loan, we're going to deal with a note, and we're also going to deal with a revolver. These are three of the more common tranches of debt that you'll see. Um, and if, a, if you have more debt, if you issue more debt at different rates, you can just add tranches to this fairly easily. Um, so we'll start with the bank loan. Um, so we've got a bank loan. Let's say we've got a bank loan at 2.25%. What I did here is I have the bank loan, you have your opening balance to start. Then you have the mandatory repayment, which is if you if your bank loan ma is mandatory or mandating a repayment either with an amortization or a due date, you can plug it in here. Uh, new issuance, so if you want to take on any more of the bank loans at this rate, you can just throw it in here. Pay down, so this is the amount that you would pay down that loan before the mandatory repayment date. And then that all leads up to a closing balance, which you then use to calculate an average balance of the average of the beginning and the end and the interest expense. So um, the interest expense is calculated on the average balance because things don't happen at the very end or the very beginning of the year. The average balance is supposed to be a better reflection of how much debt you had throughout the year, which is a more accurate representation of the interest expense that you'll pay. And at the end, you're going to calculate a remaining cash or pay down for the other tranches of debt. So I'm going to delete these numbers, and then we'll go into how I calculated them. All right, so the first thing I did is name this tranche. Um, things change over time. You're going to change these numbers. So while we could just type in bank loan at 2.25%, if I change this at some point, this up here is not going to change. So I really want this to be flexible. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make this into a concatenation formula equals, do the quotes, bank loan at and then I'm going to do the and sign, and then I'm going to select this cell, and then I'm going to format it as a percent. So now it says bank loan at 3%, and if I change this to 2.25%, it'll change. All right, so now I've got all this stuff. I need to first calculate the opening balance, which will be the closing balance from the previous period. So I'm just going to throw in a starting balance here whenever this debt comes. Right now it's at 500, which is just a made up number. The mandatory repayment is going to be a formula which basically will tell Excel if this is a mandatory repayment year, if it's due in 2015, we're going to pay the full balance. Otherwise, we're going to pay the remaining amortization, which could potentially be zero. Uh, this amortization percentage just says which percent of the loan is due that day or that year. So our formula is going to be equals if. So if it's going to be, if it's the uh, repayment year, so the mandatory repayment year, if this year, 2015, is equal to the mandatory repayment year, we are going to make this balance the total opening balance of that year. Otherwise, we are going to do, and I'm going to lock this uh, column here so that I can drag this formula right. Otherwise, we're going to do the minimum of this amortization, and I'm going to lock the column, times that starting balance. So the minimum of that, which will tell you, okay, I'm going to pay that amortization, but or if there's less than that, 
uh, available left in the balance, I'm going to do the opening balance. So that says if there's not enough money left in the in the balance, let's say there's only 10 left in the balance and my amortization is 20, I'm only going to pay off 10. I'm not going to pay off more than I owe. So let's check this math. Basically, if this amortization is 10%, it should come off as 10% of 500, which is 50. Good. If this amortization if this is 25 and there's only 25 left, this should come off as 25. Good. And if this is due in 2015, the whole thing should be paid. Good. All right, so we've got that calculation right. Um, I'm going to drag this formula over and this should calculate every year. And I'm also going to uh, drag this formula over. Every this should be the closing balance is the beginning balance every year, and that and there we go. Okay, so new issuance I'm going to leave blank. That's if someone wants to put in a new number for amount of debt issued. Pay down I'm going to uh, make this whatever we want, but then I'm going to include this cash sweep thing. So if this is going to be true, one is true, zero is false. We want all available cash to be used to pay down this debt. That says we're going to use our cash to pay down debt early if we can. And if we don't want the cash sweep, we don't want this to do anything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make this formula. So we want to say if the available cash, which is here, is less, sorry, is greater than zero. So if we have extra cash, then we want to pay back this sweep number. And the reason we're doing this is because if it's zero, if it's false, we don't want it to do anything. So that's why we have the zero in here times the minimum of what's left or sorry it's what's left is the opening balance plus any repayment or issuance we did in in the uh, in this example or uh, the cash left available for pay down. And if, so this, if this is one, we're going to make this not do ever. And this, we're going to make 0% AMORT. So if this cash sweep is one, we're going to use all that cash to pay down uh, the rest of this. And our closing balance is going to be simple. We just add, do the sum of all of these. And then our average balance is also easy. Average the beginning and the opening. And then the interest expense is just that average balance times this interest expense. Copy that over. And the cash remaining for pay down is going to be uh, this cash available for pay down minus any pay down that you've done. Drag this right, and now these are our. This is going to be our bank loan. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a note. Very similar. So we're just going to copy this here, and I'm just going to change this note at that. And then I'm going to also say, because notes mature, maturing and I'm just going to say when it's due. So this is it. Note maturing in 2015 and let's say it's 7.5%. So this is a note at 7.5% at maturing in 2015. I'm also going to take this new issuance out uh, because we're not going to issue a note, a new note. This number should move to the cash remaining for pay down up here. Hold on a second. Oh, I deleted that cell, so I'm going to take that out. 
I'm also going to change this cash remaining for pay down to be this cash, the cash remaining for pay down after the last note, not at the top, the last note here, plus any pay down done. Copy this to the right. And this interest expense, just to make sure, audit these cells to make sure this is all pulling right. This average balance should still be calculated correctly. Good. This closing balance should still be the sum of this. And the starting balance, let's say, is 750. Uh, zero cash. Let's say it's a zero cash sweep. So we still have that note. And then if we pay it back in 2016, uh, this link is not going appropriately. So we are going to move this back up here. 2016. This should be that year. So I'm going to lock this cell. So that it works. And now that works. So if it's 2017, that payment should move over. 2018, good. Okay, so if it's 2020, you should never see that repayment in here because we only go out to 2019. So the next thing we're going to do is the revolver. The re re revolver is short-term debt that most businesses have. Uh, it acts like a credit card. Uh, if they need a little bit of extra cash, they usually take it from that rather than issuing a new long-term debt or a bank loan. Um, so we're going to do this revolver first. Um, and a revolver is a little bit different. So we're only going to have a pay down. We're going to call, going to call this a drawdown or a pay down. So this is going to work such that there's going to be a committed amount uh, that the bank says, okay, your credit card limit is um, let's call it a thousand here and then you're going to have an interest expense uh, ex interest rate for your undrawn amount uh, and for your drawn amount And the reason that you have those two different ones is because they actually charge you for this available balance whether or not you use it uh, because it's still being held up with their capital. Um, the drawn amount is a higher interest rate usually because you're, you're actually taking that from the bank, but even if you haven't drawn it down yet, they're going to charge you. Okay, I'm going to hurry this along to make this go faster. You know, this reference. And then, um, so... I'm going to change this interest expense. This interest expense is going to be the undrawn amount times the undrawn interest rate plus the drawn amount, which is this average balance. Uh, times the drawn interest rate. And this undrawn amount is going to be equal to the total committed minus the average balance. All right, so the next thing we need to do is calculate this drawdown uh, formula, which is basically just going to be similar to our cash sweep. It's going to be if our remaining balance after the last debt less than zero. Then it's going to be the absolute value of the remaining balance, which means we are going to uh, pay, we're going to take this and uh, fill our cash balance with this revolver. Or else we're going to do the minimum of the cash remaining or our opening balance. Because the revolver is always a cash sweep, we're going to delete this and this should work. So. So now we're going to go back to the top and add up all of our total debt up here, which is just the closing balances of each type of debt. Do the same thing for the cash available after financing. It's just equal to the last cash one after the revolver and sum up the interest expense. And these three plug back into our income statement for the interest expense, and these two for the balance sheet. 